I'm driving, Mac is riding to Culiacan from Los Notes. Looking forward to what's gonna come today. Freaking so big. So freaking bumpy. Part of the toll road. Ton kind of vendors, like people just selling stuff there, but it's so good. We arrived in Kuliako. Uh, yeah, Kuliak. Huh? Kuliakan. Kuliakan. Keep forgetting the names. They're all new and different <laughs> to pronounce. So um, we arrived and we're at the mm. botanical gardens. So we're gonna go check that out and uh, see if we can possibly park here overnight. If not, there's somewhere nearby. The Culiacan Botanical Garden spans over 10 hectares and I discovered it's home to over 1,000 plant species from all over the world. From above, you can see how the gardens are a living museum of both flora and art. This installation here is by Sophia Taboas, which invites you to establish a specific relationship with the son of Sinaloa. This metal installation by Olaflor Eliasson is integrated with five different species of plants with aromatic flowers, exploring the relationships between science and aesthetics. And this piece by Marco Roundtree is more interactive, designed as a playful backdrop for countless quinceanera photos. We decided to use the self-guided audio tour, which cost 150 pesos, which is about $8 US, 
and it was definitely worth it. The tour is packed with interesting details about the plants and artworks in the garden. And here in the tropical biome, we came across this banana tree that was just thriving in the garden's humid climate. The garden is also home to local wildlife and I spotted this iguana perfectly camouflaged in the trees. Where's the sculpture? I don't As we moved through the different sections, we saw some impressive cactus species, which are a staple of Mexico's desert regions. Walking through the garden, we noticed how the layout mimics various ecosystems from dry desert landscapes to dense tropical forests, making it feel like I was exploring different little worlds. At the end of the walk, it was hard to miss this beautiful wedding setup with the band already practicing. Having a having a wedding in there. Oh my gosh, it looks magical. Oh. heard the band practicing with like violin and bass and stuff and it was cool so yeah wow Botanical gardens here were super cool and we did the audio tour which uh, ended up taking us two hours to get through only half of it so we asked them if we could stay in the car park the night and go back in the morning to do it and they said yeah that's fine but we saw them setting up for this wedding which looked freaking huge and magical and the whole our park is just absolutely <laughs> full and man we went out to get tacos and had a like walk by it and everything looks like they're having a blast <laughs> met some people before who asked if they could park here they're like we'll be back at like 3 a.m is that okay so yeah but we've been enjoying the music we're watching the band play uh like practice before Wow, so just being able to chill here and listen to that, which has been pretty fun. <laughs> Just sitting in here listening to this freaking symphony go off playing the money heist theme and a whole bunch of other stuff it's wild i don't know if you can hear it at all but The next day, we came back to explore the aquatic section of the garden, where sets of ponds really stand out as a part of the architectural landscape. Here, we found a variety of aquatic plant species that add even more diversity to the garden. We came back to the botanical gardens today to finish the tour, the audio tour. Um, we can have a picnic. It's such a beautiful day in a beautiful spot here. It's a lot quieter now without kind of organization for the wedding that was happening like right there. The wide variety of water lilies and the magnificent Amazonian victory really stand out with their huge floating leaves. One of the highlights for Mac, who used to be an arborist, was this enormous palm tree, which is said to be one of the largest in Mexico, and it really dominates the space with its height. You touch this plant that's meant to close up.
This clear installation was really cool as it distorts your view, creating an optical illusion that encourages you to look at the garden in a completely new way. In the bamboo forest, I found this striking star-shaped art piece, adding a touch of magic to the dense greenery. Walking through the bamboo forest felt really serene. It's a peaceful, shaded area where you can really appreciate the incredible variety of plants. We also admired the bonsai tree collection, which shows the intricate art of cultivating these trees in miniature form. And of course, I couldn't resist relaxing in this hammock for a yeah, while, taking wild. in the beauty of the garden at a slower pace. So part of the other reason we came back today was so we could have a picnic in one of the three nice little areas. <laughs> it's so cute, it's this little secluded area. There were so many places we could have picked, but um, yeah. Oh, yum, not to eat. Just get some work done. Hi. Oh, I just missed him. Okay, and uh, do you know when it might be a good time? Thanks again for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and join me next episode as we head to Mazatlan.